I'm Don Farnham, and we came to Riverside in 1959. And uh, the reason we came here, we we, were, we lived in Bridgeport, and we were set, it was time to buy a house, and we were gonna buy somewhere. We looked at other places, and we, uh, we uh, came to visit our neighbors across the street, the Terrazinos, and uh, they said the house across the street is for sale, so we looked at it that night, and they come out the next day and bought it. So we've been there ever since, and very happy about it. When we first moved here, I had to leave to work early because I had to allow a good 10 to 15 minutes extra time finding my way out of Riverside. <laughs> now, I couldn't take the easy way just drive to Ogden, but I always wanted to go down Lone Common and get on the Congress. and. Uh, just a long left turn here and there, and you're back where you started. <laughs> so, but it's a it's a real nice problem to have. It, uh, I enjoy it. I, I, I agree. And just in general, if you're out uh, mowing your lawn or uh, when you were walking the dog, and that, how many people have, have ever stopped you and asked you for directions? Not a lot. Oh no. No, no, not, not really. Uh, occasionally, yes, and uh, but not. Uh, uh, not really. Uh, man, they, uh, they always ask me. I don't know, maybe I just Are they? Face. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I don't look friendly. Yeah, well, I don't know. Honestly, you know. Well, you know, when you're going to work and you're, if you're late, you really can't tell them I got lost in my hometown. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's true. So when you, when you got here in 59, which of your uh, neighbors have been here the longest? Well, there was an old, old gentleman next door, Mr. Rainey. He'd been here. He had movies that went way back in the middle of the 30s. And at that time, there were only two or three houses on the other side of the st street. And it, just pretty much a lot of these houses were built right after World War II. Uh, now, uh, this house here was built in 1923. But uh, I can remember in those movies, there was cows grazing over across the street, you know. Uh, and that White House was a farmhouse. 129 Berry Point was a farmhouse, and they had a barn, uh, yeah. That's pretty good. And in 59, you know, it was mostly World War II veterans, for, uh, and a lot of kids, everybody had kids. And then we had a dry spell through the, I don't know, through the 70s, kids had grown up, and, uh, but now, we're back in, we're starting to get kids again, and there's changing, people are moving, people are dying, new neighbors, so it's a changing neighborhood. Uh, it was since 1959, how do you figure Riverside has changed? Uh, well, it's more liberal, if you will, it's more open. Uh, uh, that's for the good. Uh, otherwise, in the 60s or 70s, if you mentioned bike path or something, you'd be run out of town. But now we welcome a bike path and the trail around, and we welcome visitors coming through town to see our town. Now, the other changes are that our, our small businesses have left. Uh, we used to be able to go to the hardware to buy a 25 cent bolt right over to Anderson's Hardware on Burlington, or we could go to Henniger Drug Corps to pick up a prescription. Now we gotta go Menards, Walgreens, or somewhere. Uh, that is one of the, something we can't control, but it is a change that, it's not welcome, really. The recreation department has improved greatly. When we first moved here uh, in the 60s, our children started playing Little League, and the old timers in town, I don't want to say any organization, but they did not want ball diamonds in their parks. Uh, now, the, f the first thing they put us over in Indian Garden, which was not improved, it was just swampland, really. And uh, plus, there wasn't enough. We wanted diamonds in the big ballpark and in Robinson Court. And we finally got them there after great discussions. And the joke was, uh, when we first had driving the diamonds in Robinson Court was, by next, next week there might be a tree planted on first base. So, uh, so but uh, they've opened up and it's quite child friendly. Now, uh, we used to have a rec center in town, which you know is our TV studios now. But that was a place for the teenagers to go for dances, 
supervised dancers, the parents were chaperones, and uh, that would be welcome back. But we do have many good programs now under the, the recreation department. It, uh, it's self-sufficient, they have their own budget, and uh, it's really an asset to our town. I would like to say something about our police department. Sure. Uh, we, uh, back in the 80s, uh, we brought in a professional police, a, a police captain from Chicago, Eugene Karczewski. And he brought professionalism to our police department and organized it. And we have one of the best police departments. Now it's taken over by Chief Tom Weitzel. It's one of the best departments in the, in the country, as far as I'm concerned. Well, when we moved here, we had, uh, we, my wife Ann, we were married in 1948 at St. Bridget's in Chicago, and we lived in Bridgeport for nine years. And then uh, we had, we've had four daughters and two sons. We raised them here in Riverside. They all went to Riverside schools, St. Mary's, Hauser, Central, and RB, and couldn't be better. I didn't go to college. I, I went to t television school. I was, a sir, I was a radio man in the service. I was, had a basic knowledge of electronics. And I came out here and went to DeVry because when I got out of the Marine Corps in 1945, I dawdled around and I didn't, at the time I made an application to go to college, I was on a waiting list to, for another year. So I thought if I wait a year, I'll never go to college. So I came out here and went to television school, just an extension of my electronic and then uh, went to Kansas City for an advanced course and sent a letter to ABC and they said, stop in and see us. So I did just that a one week later and the, Mr. Cummings says, could you start today? And I said, you better believe it. I had no idea what it paid or what else, but I'll take it. And it lasted 45 years. I, was, I worked at ABC. I was... That was my whole career. I never worked anywhere else except when I was in school. But uh, I was at 45 years at ABC and... Uh, ABC Television? ABC, yeah. Channel 7, ABC Television, the American Broadcasting Company. Right. And it has been very good to me. In the 30s, and in 1942, the government broke them up as a monopoly. It broke up NBC. They had a red and a, net, a, red and a blue network and they had to get rid of one, so they got rid of the Blue Network, and that became ABC. My son Don has been at ABC now well over 30 years, and his son Ryan is down at ABC, all Channel 7, and my son Dennis worked at Fox for 25 years and retired and is uh, working elsewhere now. But yes, uh, the girls fortunately couldn't get jobs in TV. So. In 1972, our uh, trip to China with President Nixon, which opened up, nobody had been to China since 1949 uh, from the free world, and uh, that historically. But then there's other memorable ones. We were, I was on the carrier that picked up John Glenn out of the Yellow Ocean in 1962. And then I was, if you want first, I was a technical director on the first wide world of sports. If you remember that, it was the Drake Relays, the Drake Relays, April 1961. It was the very first wide world of sports. And did they have the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat on the first? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, they did. Yes, <laughs> and at the uh, at the '84 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo, I got to meet that guy that comes crashing down and goes through the clubhouse. Everybody thought he was dead, but he isn't. He's well alive. He was a starter at the Olympics in Sarajevo, and we used to go out and have a hoist a few with him. That's and, the, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's the ski jumper, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, say that again. Who, who was that fellow? Well, I, his name escapes me. But what, 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 he was the. He was a starter in the, the '84 Olympics for the downhill skiing, and in, in Sarajevo. And on the beginning of the TV program, what happened? Well, he skated down and went through the shack or something, and went flying, and. And that was the agony of defeat. <laughs> uh, but everybody thought they'd, they'd never see him again, but he's very much alive. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's, I like that story. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, this Emmy, uh, this is my second one, <laughs> not, not uh, for the 1980 Olympics at Lake Placid. I was the man on the mountain. 
And every morning I went in a chopper to work over on the far mountain. And they dropped me off and I shot the downhill skiing and other events on an 80 inch lens. And I was all alone. I had a gas generator and a, and a microwave and I was totally self-sufficient. I went over and back in a chopper every day and at the Finally, the next year, and the Emmys come out, surprise. Uh, my name got put in by somebody, and it, thankfully, I got another Emmy. The unusual thing about uh, the vice president was in the area one night, which was George H.W. Bush, so all aircraft were grounded. So they couldn't come and pick me up, and it got to be dark, and I had to walk back down about a half a mile, but there was a rope. In the summertime, they thought ahead. They put a rope from my position way back to the, the headquarters, and uh, I followed that down. Very, very tiresome, but... You had to carry all your gear down, too. No, no, we left it all there. Oh, okay. All I carried was my lunch bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in working, uh, especially my job, you can't really commit to anything because next thing you know, you'll be working that day. But I was a little league coach and for a couple of years, and we had very good teams. We won a, we won a championship, and I was helped out with the Boy Scouts, and I chaperoned a few dances at the, at the club, at the uh, teen club, at the, uh, you know what I mean, the recreation hall. Sure. And then uh, after I retired, I drove for People Care for about 13 years, and that we took elderly people to their doctor appointments. And uh, I drove that until finally the people I was driving were younger than me. <laughs> so, so, and, uh, and then I belonged to 15 years in the Lions Club. And uh, as you know, we have chicken dinner, benefits, uh, candy day, and the 4th of July we raise funds for the blind. And uh, plus, we have block parties here, and I'll mm -hmm. always help out. There's always something to do. Well, that was from your, uh, that was for volunteerism for the village of Riverside. Uh, that's the share, uh, Michael Sheen's Medal of Honor for volunteers. And uh, for that particular year, I forget what year it is, but. Uh, uh, the county sheriff. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, that's from the. Sure. Was he, was he sure if he was a sheriff? I think so. Or he yeah. ran? Or did he run and lose? <laughs> I don't know. He's Michael Sheehan and he's, he's noted anyway. Yeah. And big enough to give out Medal of Honors. There you, go. <laughs> <clears throat> you mentioned uh, Johnny Kerr. Uh, he was a famous Riverside resident. Is that, and you yourself, you're uh, sort of a famous Riverside resident. You've been, in, uh, you've been in a local papers? Well, yeah, I've been in a local paper. I don't want to say several times, but if you've been here 45 years, you ought to be in a few times, yes. Uh, whenever noble, like when I was on the carrier picking up John Glenn or when I went to China, I always got good write-ups in the Riverside Papers. And What's that latest thing in the landmark? What's that about? Oh, that's, um, oh, that's celebrating my service in the Marine Corps. And uh, at, uh, as you know, I would go back to Iwo Jima, well, every five years, uh, uh, just a visit. Uh, it's a military tour. And this last time, I took a huge flag for the village of Riverside, and I flew it on Mount Suribachi. And that's the flag that they're going to use here on Memorial Day for their festivities, remembering our war dead. That's that. That's terrific. That's outstanding. Uh, yeah, something said. Uh, that. That's they're very nice. Something else. Uh, well. And then the uh, I know what's your shirts about the uh, honor flight? Is oh yes, I uh, in September 2012 I think it is. I took the honor flight to Washington, and that's an all volunteer. All the people with your volunteers, they the escorts they pay their own way. It's the greatest thing in the world. You're pampered from the time you leave the cab at the midway until you get home at night. And uh, I can't speak highly enough for it. It's a great thing. Well, you deserve it. Yeah. Thank you. It would only make sense to stay here because of location. 
I mean, where else can you be 20 minutes from the loop? Or if you have to drive, it normally it's just a night, half an hour downtown. Plus schools. The schools are everything. And at every level, the schools, we've, uh, as far as I'm concerned, couldn't be any better. Yes, I, uh, I try to shop in Riverside. I go to the Riverside food, Riverside Foods all the time and eat at the Riverside Restaurant and the, the uh, what's the other locomotive? Uh, the Choo Choo Cafe. Yeah, the Choo Choo Cafe, yes. We, uh, we uh, patronize as much as we can. And we would do more if, if there were more here. Well, uh, we were very good friends of Johnny Kerr, but uh, I've always been a basketball fan in Illinois, Notre Dame, and the Bulls. And I, I did a lot of work with, with the Bulls, being with sports and with news. And uh, yes, I'm very attached to Chicago Bulls, and uh, I'm just waiting for next year. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all are, Don. <laughs> Important people are well-known people in Riverside. I would certainly wouldn't, would like to mention Dr. Martin Marty. Uh, we worked several lectures with him at the library, and I have been to picnics and parties with him, and he's a tremendous person. And uh, I've, I feel honored to have been able to talk to him. Yeah. That's, that's very nice. You know, there's one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, you worked for ABC Channel 7 for a number of years, and uh, you worked the uh, Midnight Mass, is that true? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, what happened at one time when you had to do a sound check? <laughs> The, the, the sound guy asked you to go up there and check the mic? Oh, yeah. What happened there? We were all set up and uh, we went to dress, get where, dressed. Where, where, where? We were at Holy Name Cathedral for mid, uh, Christmas Eve for Midnight Mass. And uh, we, we did rehearse and all that, and we went back and we went to the truck and got our ties and our sport coats on. And when I was headed back for my camera, and the audio man on the truck says, When you go by the podium, give me a test. So I walked out the podium and everybody stood up <laughs> and I said testing one two three four <laughs> and they said no. and then so I went back and what are you going to do <laughs> I only work here <laughs> right that's right yeah uh, I like okay thank you well, Don, we want to thank you very much for letting us uh, invade your home and, uh, and uh, move things around and tear things up and, uh, and tell us uh, your, your history of, in Riverside. And, uh, well, I hope you, can, you. hope you can get a, a couple of minutes of good stuff out of this. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. And good luck to Channel 6 Riverside TV.